Hi guys. Uh, I think this is working. <laughs> it's um, kind of hard because since it's a broadcast, I can't um, necessarily see you guys um, in return. Uh, but I think if you go on the Google Plus page, you should be able um, maybe to participate in the, like, to send in questions. So if anybody uh, is more familiar with Google Plus than me and wants to try that out, um, feel free. And um, you can also, I have the Facebook window open here, so if you want to leave a question on like the FMH thread or something, I can um, maybe see that. But otherwise, we will get started because I'm uh, like 15 minutes behind here. So hopefully, um, this won't take too long and you guys um, won't be too frustrated. Uh, I'm hoping to be able to um, use some slides, but it doesn't look like that. It doesn't look like that's going to work. Oh, shoot, you guys. <laughs> I feel like this is kind of um, much more difficult than the many Google tutorials I read led me to believe. Um, So with that said, I will, I guess, just dive in here and we'll go over um, the material that I prepared. And unfortunately, I think we'll mostly just have to be looking at me while I talk um, the whole time. But um, we will go through this. and. Hopefully it will be helpful, um, and I can um, post the slides online uh, later um, as a summary of what I'm going to cover here. So basically the purpose of this training is to talk about how to engage in Mormon feminist activism on Facebook. There are, uh, are currently and have been a number of um, Mormon feminist activism or consciousness raising events on Facebook. Um, and Facebook can be a really useful tool, but there are ways in which we can maximize the efficacy of using Facebook. Um, so that's the goal of this training, is to go over some ideas on how to do that. So having a public page uh, or event draws the attention of a wide spectrum of people and has a reach exponentially larger than what we can achieve using only blogs or websites because of the way that Facebook adds updates to people's news feeds. Um, as we comment, on and view the page, Facebook understands the content to be important and will add those comments to the news feeds of our friends and then our friends of friends. And when these people view, comment, or like posts on the page, the info spreads to their friends feeds and their friends of friends feeds as, as well. So this is one of the ways that potential supporters learn about events and causes they otherwise would not, uh, but this also drives detractors to the page. So when we have all of these detractors um, as well as supporters coming onto the page, uh, it's a great advertising opportunity, but it also creates a high level of for conflict um, and so in order to be effectively using these public pages and events um, we need to think about how to handle dialogue on the page and in determining the answer to this question 
you need to consider your goals. So first, um, what is the purpose of the organization that's running the page or individual? And then consider what is the purpose of the page, the page itself, uh, and who is the audience. So um, I'm pausing here. I see a message from someone who's having trouble getting from Kate, I think, who's having getting on the hangout. So I'm gonna tell her to view it on YouTube. I think that's working for people, right? I haven't gotten more messages that it's working or not working. Sorry for the brief um, tangent. Um, I was saying though that um, what we want to do is um, consider the purpose of the page and consider the audience. So um, I'm going to talk, be talking a lot about ordained women um, because this is the specific organization um, around which some of these materials have been designed, but um, uh, the general principles apply really well to um, any other kind of Facebook activism, particularly Mormon feminist Facebook activism you might be engaging in, and um, the advice and sort of general principles that I'm offering have come from my experience in doing this kind of stuff on Facebook both for Pants and for Let Women Pray and some of the lessons that I learned and that, and that um, the people that I worked with were able to learn and I've sort of been collecting um, this kind of wisdom. So uh, back to this what is purpose thing in the case of ordained women, the purpose of our Facebook page is to inform the public about events, win support, and to make LDS women's ordination the subject of broad discourse. Another way to think about this question is to consider what the goals for the page are not. So you can notice, for example, that among the goals that I listed, uh, the following were not included, okay? Changing people's minds, making people laugh, critiquing the church, or fomenting rebellion, right? So none of those things um, are among the identified goals that ordained women has for the page. Now, it doesn't mean that those things won't happen, right? Someone might find something funny on the page or decide that we are right, but those are not our aims. It's important to keep uh, this purpose in mind while publishing content to the page and posting comments because it keeps the conversation focused, the message clear, and increases your capacity to accomplish the goals that you have set. So for an example of the way that this can go wrong, we can think about the pants event, wear pants to church day from last December. So initially, wear pants to church day was conceived of as a simple way to build solidarity among Mormon feminists who are expressing uh, their discontent with gender inequality in the church and to publicize the formation of all enlisted. Okay, however, the event quickly exploded beyond the borders of its originally intended audience. This was unexpected and sudden. Because the original goals of the event were small and aimed at an already sympathetic population, the onslaught of attention and detractors created a messaging problem. Namely, that there wasn't a clearly articulated and focused message. So that complicated the conversation that was happening on the event um, page and eventually the uh, Wear Pants to Church Day page 
because there is a difference between an event page, an event and a page, which um, I will just touch on very briefly at a later point. Um, but the conversation, because it got so complicated, uh, eventually attacks were coming from every conceivable angle. Literally, people, a few men, and I think like one woman, talking about the necessity for women to wear skirts so that they could absorb the feminine power of the earth, to people um, crying apostasy and disrespect to the prophet for wearing pants. And so there's this huge range of attacks coming because there wasn't um, a, a carefully framed conversation um, in about which um, people were discussing. It was really broad, and um, that led to a broad range of attacks. So we talked about setting goals, right? So once you set the goals of um, the purpose of the page you, and or what you're doing on Facebook, then you want to consider how to achieve those goals. So, first step is page settings. Are you going to do an event or a page? Those are different, right? Page is longer lasting um, and gives you more moderating uh, capabilities. So, that's generally what um, is largely being made use of, I think, for, for the um, majority of feminist Facebook activist type events. Um, and then you can also consider um, within that page, which is mostly what I'm going to be talking about is the understanding that we're working with a page here, is the page settings, content generation. Um, and then you want to think about as you establish a commenting policy and uh, guidelines for the generation of your content, the psychology of humans generally in terms of how um, you can convince people of something uh, that they previously opposed and or haven't um, considered. So in terms of page settings, we'll just cover this part really quick. You have a couple options in terms of who can post, just the page or everyone. And they have pros and cons. If everyone is able to post, more, much more content is going to be generated, and so that content is probably going to be hitting a lot more news feeds. However, it's much harder to control the conversation. So you may, with a particularly popular um, or controversial issue, want to have only the page capable of generating the content, which is the current um, case for the Ordain Women Facebook page. Only Ordain Women can post content, and that means that all of the uh, original posts are, um, the tone is set by Ordain Women. You can also, through the page, ban users. Um, no one has a right to be talking on your Facebook page, and so if it's becoming problematic from either side, you can ban um, that user from being able to comment on your page. If you are working on moderating someone, maybe it's a supporter, but they're having trouble engaging in a way that you've determined would be helpful, and so in the meantime you're messaging them, you can also um, hide posts, and um, that can be a way to sort of, uh, sort of intermittent, I think, like a middle ground kind of moderating solution um, until you are either able to resolve that individual's um, commenting defaults or um, until you determine to ban them from the page. It's important though to consider when banning um, detractors that they can actually be incredibly useful. They 
generate um, sympathy among people who otherwise would not feel emotionally um, sympathetic towards your cause. So, for example, again, in just referring to the Wear Pants to Church Day last year, Nancy Ross and Jessica Duckett Finnegan um, conducted a survey of Mormon feminists and found that they um, found through that survey that a number of people actually um, became supporters of Wear Pants to Church Day because of the vitriol that they saw online and they felt called to support um, the people facing those attacks. And so in that way, um, detractors can be useful essentially um, their uh, antagonistic opposition to you um, comes back to actually um, defeat their goals of um, as a detractor and as someone who would like to see you not succeed. Um, the other thing you want to consider is content generation. Uh, as content is being generated and produced by the page, that is the only way that the stuff will um, continue to show up in news feeds and continue to draw attention and new uh, viewers and new um, potential supporters. So as we discussed, ordained women has it set up so that the only content generation is being done by ordained women itself. However, if um, all people are able to generate content, it's a good idea to have um, individuals assigned to generating um, positive conversational content in order to keep the tone of the page um, positive because Vi visitors um, and potential supporters or even just sympathizers um, feel better um, about engaging with the page and learning about the um, originating organization if their uh, if the originating organization seems to be generating positivity versus generating negativity. The other um, content generation uh, tool is comments. And so the more comments the post gets, the more that Facebook understands it to be important and the more feeds it's going to drop it into. Um, so that's something to consider both in commenting on positive threads that you'd like to see appear in more and more people's news feeds and also something to consider if a thread is derailed or is a negative um, original post, the more that you comment on it, the more viewers it's, and potential participants it's going to attract. And so um, sometimes in those cases it's better to just like let those threads die. Um, so in determining how to like the tone of the content and of the comments generated, you want to consider um, how people come to be sympathetic to a cause that they originally um, were not. And generally you can do that by appealing to common values and maintaining um, positive perceptions. So, um, we hear a lot with ordained women that people didn't feel good about what ordained women was doing, but as they perceived the um, content that ordained women has been producing and the um, the nature of the remarks that were made have been made by Kate and other um, ordained women spokespeople that that positive perception and the 
way that they've appealed to common values has at least won their sympathy. And that's a first step. Um, if someone um, is going to become a supporter, often that's where they stop first, um, as just sympathizing. Um, but even if they don't take that next step, they certainly um, are no longer uh, detractors, right, and actively um, working in opposition, and so that's a win. And so you want to work on generating sympathy, winning sympathy from uh, the audience. You also um, eventually would potentially hope to change people's minds, and so the way that you do that is actually Science has showed us counterintuitive to what we all like to think changes our minds. We all like to think that we will change our minds if we're given good, evidence-based, logical arguments. But there have actually been somewhat depressing studies that have shown that when people are faced with facts that contradict their dearly held beliefs, they cling to them more dearly. So when you're especially dealing um, with emotionally charged issues, logical appeals um, will tend not to be successful in terms of winning you ground. And quite often um, you'll find that the more rhetorical wins that you have, um, that you can lose ground um, in terms of people's emotional willingness to be a supporter. The other um, way that you get people to change their minds is by giving them time. People like to believe that, right, I said we like to believe that we came to change our minds about an issue because we, we Right, we like to think too that we did it by ourselves. Found um, enough evidence to construct a logical, evidence-based argument. What actually happens is that we live with this for the idea that we oppose for an extended period of time, and slowly, the more instances that we are exposed to the idea and to the various um, positive arguments, the, the more it works on our emotional minds, which then convince our logical minds that we now have an evidence-based argument. So we need to um, give people time to change their minds, um, but and also space to say that they've changed their minds um, without that feeling like a shot to their pride, right? Because no one likes to be wrong, um, and it's hard to admit that you were wrong. And so the more difficult you make it for someone to say, I was on this side of the issue, but now I think that's wrong, and I'm on this side of the issue, the less likely they are to make that jump. The more difficult um, you make that, the higher um, social costs, the higher um, face, um, that the higher um, amount of face that they might lose um, in making that change, the less likely they are to do it. And so you want to give people time and space to enable them to change their minds. Um, which is part of the reason that changing minds isn't one of the goals of the Ordained Women Facebook page. Rather, the goal is to um, garner support or sympathizers, um, which is what we talked about towards the beginning about identifying what your goals are and also what your goals are not. Um, the other aspect um, of, of human psychology that we want to consider um, in terms of utilizing Facebook is how to encourage the people who are supporters to speak out. And so I, it seems that some of the really vital ways um, to encourage people to actively 
um, participate and publicly declare their support is to create um, safe spaces for them in which they um, can deal with any potential fallout. So Ordain Women offers that kind of um, safe space support group for anyone who has submitted a profile to the site. All profile holders are in a um, particular um, Facebook group and so are able to um, network with one another about any issues that arise from posting a profile, right? Um, other ways to tap networks of support are to use some of the broader um, Mormon feminist groups on Facebook and to um, basically access validation. Having validation on the one side enables people um, to speak out without um, feeling so much fear um, and without feeling delegitimized. So having resources like that um, and working to uh, continually provide those kinds of resources for people can be really helpful in getting supporters to speak out. So something that I'm want to talk about now is a little bit ordained women specific, particularly for people who have profiles um, and who are active um, commenters on our and or who are active commenters on our Facebook page. This is um, going to be particularly relevant information for them. However, um, I think the principles, again, will apply to um, anyone who's interested in being more effective with um, Mormon feminist Facebook activism. So what I'm going to talk about <laughs> is the page um, um, even like blog comment um, commenting policy. And so this commenting policy for the page was something that we developed based on um, the goals for the page that I talked about um, a little bit earlier, which to just um, rehearse them is to um, inform the public about events, win support, and to make LDS women's ordination the subject of broad discourse. And so those are our goals. And so with those goals in mind, uh, we have crafted a um, page comment policy um, that we hope will be of use for all of us who are regular commenters on the page to better um, achieve the goals right that we've set. So our page comment policy, I'm going to start with the don'ts, right? Um, so things we don't want no sarcasm, okay? It antagonizes and alienates. No snark. No insults. And it's important to remember that what qualifies as an insult can be a broad category. So speak and write very carefully. Um, do not personally criticize church leaders. Do not insult the church as an institution or as a religious movement. Uh, those things are not helpful um, for ordained women generally or for um, accomplishing the goals of the page. It's important um, also not to express anger. Um, that's problematic to say, right, as a feminist because anger is a really vital um, emotion for feminists to experience and to learn how to utilize. However, on the page, expressing anger isn't effective in accomplishing the goals because it puts people on the defensive and implies entitlement. Those things are not um, compatible with winning support. So anger, completely valid um, feeling to have, but express uh, 
expressing anger on the face, in this case, help ordain women accomplish the goals. For another page with another set of goals, it may. Um, and so th that's why um, you need to take the principles and then tailor to what you're looking to accomplish. Uh, some other things, a couple more don'ts. Uh, do not challenge someone's right to post on the page. Uh, this happens every once in a while, right? Somebody comes on the page and they're posting really antagonistic things and seem to be commenting on all the threads about how dumb and stupid this whole thing is and why are you wasting your time? And so the natural defensive reaction um, that many of us have is to say, well, hey, you, why are you posting on this page if you think it's so dumb and such a waste of time? You don't need to be here. Now, those things are probably true, but it's not helpful because it ignites a circular argument in which the person you challenged will defend their right to stand up for their beliefs, uh, speak freely, etc., etc. So it creates an ancillary off-topic argument that shifts the tone of the page and or post to one of conflict. Um, and it's totally off topic from um, our desired topic of conversation, right? In this case for ordained women, discourse about women's ordination. Instead, we've created an entire side conversation that's in to totally based only on um, conflict. It's also a disingenuous um, thing to say because at any time, the um, page moderators could turn off comments entirely or ban a commenter. And so if someone was really so problematic and so um, undesirable, we, they could be removed at any time. And so it's um, just really counterproductive to create this secondary argument and then um, shift the tone of the page when if somebody is truly problematic um, it's better not to engage with them at all and simply ban them. Um, you also want to um, avoid questioning someone's character or integrity. Okay, um, It comes off as petty and argumentative and the contention it creates only again detracts from the goals of the page. The related to that is um, don't answer charges about your own character, right? So sometimes someone will make a charge that you're proud or angry or selfish. Unfortunately, you can't prove to anyone that you are not those things, especially not via Facebook. So just ignore, don't engage in that argument. It's again, circular and um, shifts the tone of the page and ultimately ineffective and um, subsidiary to the topic um, at hand um, of the page, the goals of the page. So don't worry about um, defending your character. You can't describe your character, you can only demonstrate it. Um, and in this case, often the best way to do that is to simply ignore, refuse to engage with those um, character um, assignations. The um, final um, kind of do not is uh, if someone is unrelentingly argumentative, do not engage with them anymore, period. Um, oftentimes the individuals who come on the page and comment on a lot of posts and uh, seem to be only interested in engaging in argument um, have uh, some self-importance issues and responding in any way fuels that person's self-importance, fuels the negative conversation and sends the conversation that you're having into news feeds because the more you're commenting the more important Facebook thinks it is. Um, 
it takes two people to fight and so there can't be fights happening on the page if one half of the conversation is um, refusing to engage in something that's negative and contentious. Some do's. So we want to um, answer genuine, substantive questions with genuine answers. Um, sometimes it's hard to tell the difference, and sometimes you'll get a genuine answer, or question rather, excuse me, a genuine question mixed in with um, some that are not. Um, so if you're not sure, keep it simple. For example, um, there was a comment on the Ordained Women Facebook page that started with, do you honestly believe that women should be ordained? And then there were a number of subsequent questions about um, that were phrased in a way that you could not answer um, without like the answer, they were leading questions indicating essentially that anyone in favor of women's ordination did not have a testimony of Jesus or the prophet or the church. So I ignored those questions and chose to answer um, the most genuine of those questions. The other option could have been to completely ignore the post. But I liked the question, do you honestly believe that women should be ordained? And so I quoted that question and answered, yes, I do. And so very simple, um, but a genuine answer um, from my part to that question. Now, that's a obviously a simple question with a simple answer. Um, but questions that reach you as uh, genuine or substantive are um, worth spending your time on if you'd like to. But don't spend your time on the questions, like we said, that are argumentative. Do share your testimony and personal experience. Express, um, so we talked about not expressing anger. We do want to express positive feelings or pain. Expressing um, pain is different than expressing anger. Um, and it works as an emotional appeal. People generally um, want to help individuals in pain. And so expressing your pain speaks to something that someone else can do to ameliorate your condition, where um, as anger puts someone on the defensive. So we are um, in sharing your testimony, personal experiences, positive feelings, feelings of pain, working on making emotional appeals. Um, use I statements. That's um, just generally a conflict deflector. Quote scriptures and prophets um, as there as those words speak to you and as they um, seem applicable to the conversation. Uh, focus on identifying structural problems with the church. Right. So we talked about this is not um, the place to be. Um, posting critical, personal um, comments about church leaders, um, but talking about structural problems, right? Problems that aren't the fault of any individual, but um, often, and often, as is the case in the church, work against the best intentions of many individuals is absolutely helpful. In a conversation, too, you want to, this is a do, pivot, Okay, continually pivot back to the topic at hand. Sometimes, especially when people um, are feeling particularly um, emotional about a subject, they start throwing out everything related to the topic. So this is something that we saw with pants, and I think um, that they currently see on the pants page um, somewhat as well, is that people will... Um, basically bring up anything tangential to Mormon feminism and throw it out there as a problem, right? So like, you want to wear pants and also you want the 
priesthood and also like you want to get rid of men and um, because you only need them for their sperm. Well, that's uh, most of that is too messy to deal with. So instead, just pivot back to the convert or to the talking points of the page and the purpose of the page, right? So in the case of pants. Um, this year, the focus is on inclusion. So pivot back to making church a more inclusive place. Or in the case of Ordained Women's Facebook page, pivot back to the goal of having conversations in the church about women's ordination and how um, important it is to have those kinds of conversations as a community. Something else that can be really helpful to do is to ask sincere questions of other supporters. So that's a the conversations that are happening on the page aren't just between supporters and detractors, but that supporters are having conversations amongst themselves. A lot of really great discussion happens in private, closed Facebook groups, um, and where people are often sharing really touching um, things about how they came to believe what they believe. Those conversations can maybe not in as much detail um, if it's a privacy issue, but to some extent those conversations can be really helpful to have in public because they humanize the issue and they make an emotional appeal to someone on an issue that is an emotional one, right? So no one um, is ultimately going to, um, I mean, talked about this, right, change their mind about women's ordination because of a lot of um, facts and evidence-based arguments. It's going to be because they develop an emotional connection to the issue. And, and um, modeling those kinds of um, conversations among supporters for the people who are observing the conversation um, is a really positive and helpful thing to do. You also want to remember that the conversation you are having is larger than the number of people commenting on the thread. So it may feel like you are having a conversation only with yourself and um, the supporter of, that you asked a question of. It may, um, in ca the case of a positive conversation, or it may feel like the debate you are having with a detractor is. Um, an intense interaction that's occurring between only the two of you. In reality, though, on these pages, many, many, many more people are reading than are commenting. And so when you are speaking, you are not speaking to just one person. And it's vital to remember that. Uh, the other do, uh, we talked a little bit about this in terms of how you get people to change their minds, but you want to give people a chance to come around. So if someone, even someone who's been active on the page saying um, negative things or, um, or presenting counter arguments, um, if they give an inch in the positive direction, you want to take that and validate it, right? And say, yes, you're right about that. And then you can add on your extra or you can leave it there. But allowing people um, the chance to come around um, and to give them a little room if they are um, demonstrating some of the sympathy that we talked about wanting to win. We want to give them space in which um, that sympathy could grow into something more. And telling or demonstrating to someone through your actions and your words that their um, sympathy isn't enough um, pushes them back instead of draws them in. The um, final do is to um, think about these kinds of public interactions in terms of turning the other cheek. And that's something that you're going to have to do again and again. Um, because you're, as we talked about with the don'ts, you're not going to be responding to, to personal character insults. You're not going to be responding to some of, you know, the more um, argumentative questions. Um, certainly, you're not going to be responding in a way that um, 
fuels the conflict. And so you really just need to think about um, having that kind of patience to um, turn the other cheek and re-engage. But that leads us into the um, final issue that I wanted to discuss with you all. Um, and again, sorry about not knowing how to get the slides um, into the broadcast here, but um, we can make those available um, after we're done here tonight. But um, we want to talk about how to preserve your sanity. Engaging in activism of any kind um, can be very fatiguing. And um, that is no less true of Mormon feminist activism, even just on Facebook. It can be very emotionally draining. But if you are drained, um, that you're not um, in a position to um, contribute to the work, and you're not... Um, and self-care is really important. So you, as an individual, are a priority. And so you need to consider your self-care. However, there are also ways in which um, engaging can be a less fatiguing activity. So sometimes to preserve your sanity, you need to just take a break. But there are ways in which um, you can modify your engagement so that you have more endurance. One of the ways to do that is to focus on generating positive material. To focus on um, just producing, um, for example, positive comments validating other people. Um, you can also um, utilize um, to employ um, selective hearing or reading. So while you're generating exclusively positive material, basically put blinders on and don't don't read, um, you know, to the extent that's possible, negative comments. Like don't give them space in your head. Just like ignore, right? Gloss it off and. Sometimes you may need to do that um, for an extended period of time and basically pretend that those conversations aren't happening. Even the hard ones with actually substantive questions can still be very tiring to have to explain and to answer the same arguments over and over. It's tiring and so it's okay to take a break from doing that sometimes. Um, one option too is your um, if you're working on just generating um, positive material, is to utilize passive resistance or um, covert aggression. So, an example of this would be um, someone posts something, you must not, you women who support female ordination, you must not have a testimony of the prophet. So, instead of responding to that individual, you can post um, basically next to them um, within the same thread a seemingly um, independent comment in which you say something like, yes, I have such a testimony and faith um, in a testimony of and faith in the prophet of this church and I have so much love for President Monson. These things that I'm saying right now are true, by the way. Um, I see him as a thoughtful, loving man who truly is doing the best work that he can for the saints. That's why I want to do my part in helping him by drawing his attention and the attention of leaders um, more generally to the ways in which um, women could would um, feel more fully included, right? So it's a way to basically you're side by side engaging um, 
with some with someone or some comment um, that um, feels antagonistic to you without directly engaging them in um, a opportunity to start a debate, right? So you're refuting it um, indirectly, um, and that can be less fatiguing than um, generating a conversation where then they feel the need to reply to you and you feel the need to reply to them, et cetera, et cetera, on and on. The other thing that you can do um, to preserve your ta um, sanity is what we talked about is ta earlier um, in terms of getting people, supporters, to help them s speak out. One of the other things is for people who are speaking out, you need to be tapping your social resources for validation because having these conversations can feel really invalidating. People are saying invalidating things to you. And so having that validation come from somewhere um, will help fill your energy reserves back up. You also, in order to stay sane, need to let go of um, the expectation that um, any of these conversations are conversations that you can win because you can't. Um, we talked about how people take a long time to change their minds and they like to feel like they got there on their own. No one in a debate with you um, in these public pages on Facebook is going to say, well, you're right, I changed my mind. So that's never going to happen. And so you um, need to even not, like, even let go of that expectation subconsciously. Instead, think of yourself as modeling productive conversations for other people, for people who are observing but not participating. Um, because the individual you're engaging with one-on-one um, -on -one is, is not someone who's going to, um, at the end of your interaction, say, you did it, you won. Um, and so having that expectation and that desire to win um, but not achieving it is tiring and draining. Um, and related to this, the other way, um, the final way that, um, to preserve your sanity is to have a long timeline perspective. These conversations um, been happening for many, many years in many, many different religious traditions and in many different societies. And unfortunately, um, change in gender equality is um, historically proven to be some of the most um, intractable issues of injustice because um, I think of the way that they intersect with our public and our private lives. And so having a long-term perspective and allowing time to work in people's minds and hearts is critical. Um, and you need to take the burden off of yourself of expecting that you'll be able to accomplish um, the, you know, the changing of millions of hearts and minds in, you know, a long stressful weekend on Facebook. Um, engaging in debates and know that um, this conversation will necessarily be much longer than that and so taking good care of yourself emotionally um, will en enable you um, and empower you to be a long-term participant. So um, thank you. This is um, all the material that we wanted to cover this evening. I'm so sorry for the various technical issues, um, but we've done this um, public Google Plus Hangout once, and hopefully, um, I think I learned a couple things, and so hopefully we'll be able to do it again um, and do it with more panelists, more than just one person to talk to you the whole time, and hopefully maybe figure out how to include some slides or um, videos because those things are supposed to be possible and um, do this again on some additional topics. If you have ideas for topics that you would like to see um, ordained women specifically um, talk about, 
definitely let us know. Um, or if there are other um, Mormon feminist um, projects that you would like to hear from, definitely talk to them too because um, we can dialogue about how to make use of this resource. So thanks again, and I hope you all have a really good evening.